back with another tie-in video and this one is for a fly that I am calling the slush saver and it's just kind of a take on a blank saver type streamer pattern for lakes. I've been out on the lakes a lot this last year and this is a pattern that over the last two, two and a half months or so I've been testing out and using and it works really, really well. So in the vise, I have a size 10 still water hook. You could use any one as a Daihiku. I like that hook a lot. And then I have a chartreuse bead paired up with that. And this is a 3-0 brass bead. So I'm just gonna take some black thread and get this started behind the bead real quick. And this is a nano silk thread. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get started, but that's okay. Really like this thread. So we're gonna build up a little bit of a base here on the shank of the hook, just kind of wrapping back to where that barb would be there. And I'm gonna come back forward and we're just gonna kind of build this up a little tiny bit so that the next material that we put on here has a base. Okay, so I've got that started. Now I'm gonna take some F and F slush jelly in leech black. That's what this color is called. And I have taken this and I have um, used a lighter and I've kind of cinched off the ends so that this material won't fray in the water. And I've swept this back and then I've kind of cut this as a taper. And I'll insert a clip so that you guys can kind of see what that process looks like. Be careful, do it at your own risk, using a lighter to burn this. Um, it's pretty simple, but it takes just a second. And I, I've been using this pattern a lot and this material specifically um, a lot because I like that this material moves a lot in the water. It doesn't get hung up on this hook point when it's tied in as a tail and it's opaque, right? Uh, a lot of other materials that you use for leeches aren't opaque and you can kind of see through them. And if you actually look at a leech in the water, uh, it's 100% opaque. And I know there's a lot of times when I'm out fishing and the fish are totally keyed in on completely black, solid black. They want it opaque. They won't eat a mohair leech or anything like that. They want this specific material. So what I've done is I've kind of preened back the feathers or the, the material to kind of create V's on both sides there. And you can see that that is about one and a half. So it's about one and a half the length of the hook shank. I'm just gonna put this right here and I'm gonna make some wraps over this. I'm gonna make about four or five, six wraps over that just to secure it. Make sure it's up on top like that. And this is kind of like tying in a rabbit fur or something like that. So I'm gonna make a few more locking wraps there wrap forward and I want to leave about a quarter to a third of the hook shank for the next materials. So I'm just going to make about two wraps of this, two or two or three right there, kind of up the body. And then I'm just going to kind of get this thread in that material. It can get a little bulky, but that's okay. So I'm going to make a couple wraps there to secure it. I'm going to come in, trim that off and wrap over this kind of don't mind the bulk there it's not that big of a deal so you can see how much is there right it's about a bead length behind the i'm just going to kind of comb this out a little bit so that's nice and stripped back um it's about a bead length behind the bead that we want for our next materials so now that I have that tied in, you can see that nice leech body there. I'm going to take a dubbing spinner and I'm gonna create a dubbing loop here. And you want a decent sized dubbing loop for this next material. You don't want a tiny one. You want it to be easy to work with. And I'll insert a clip here of how I made this next material kind of package for this dubbing loop. So basically what I've done is I've taken some ice dub minnow belly, uh, crystal flash with some red spectra dub and then some black peacock semi seal material. And I've put this into my tool here, my loon tool grabber thing, whatever this thing's called. And I've kind of created this nest of materials starting with the, the ice dub at the top then the red, then the black. And I've kind of put them in there together and I'm gonna capture these in my dubbing loop. Let's see if I can do this over the camera so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna capture these in there, 
just like this. And I'm gonna spin this up now. Spin it up quite a bit. And you can see there's a lot of the ice stuff down below the, the minnow belly black red, right? And we're just gonna pick this out. So the black's at the, t the bottom because we want the black to tie in last and we want that silver at the start because we're gonna kind of go over the top of that. So now this is gonna look like a mess while we wrap this, but it's okay. You'll see what we do here at the end. So now we're gonna wrap this forward just like this and build this up. And it looks kind of ridiculous right now, but you'll see in the end it all comes together. So we're gonna wrap that just like that. Looks like a total disaster. That's okay. Wrap over that. Come into their scissors. Got that loop out of there. Now we're gonna put in some securing wraps because we don't want that loop to come undone there. And now that we've kind of secured that down, we'll come in with our dubbing brush. And we're just gonna kind of pick this out. Just kind of come in, get all that material picked out just like this. And we'll kind of pull everything back and take a look at it and make sure it looks okay. And so what we've basically done is we've created this collar um, that kind of envelops the uh, F and F slush jelly a little bit. So it kind of comes over the top, creates this really cool kind of minnow leech kind of look. And now that we've got that secured, we're gonna take our black partridge feather that I have here and some of the partridge feathers you get in the packs are a little oversized and that's what we want. We want a little bit bigger hackle here. I'm gonna just put this as a collar over the top of all the flash that we just tied in. So don't worry about that tip. We will cut the tip in, cut the tip out at the end of the fly when we clean it up, come in with our hackle pliers and we're just gonna make, I'm just gonna use this feather and we'll probably use the whole thing. We're just gonna make wraps. So it's important to not build up a lot of bulk by the bead so that you can add this collar in at the end. And I like to leave a little bit of the marabou of the partridge in the feather, if possible. So I like to pick a feather like that. So now we've come in, secured that, trim out our stem here. And then we gotta find that tip, wherever that tip is. Cut that off. If you don't cut the tip out, it doesn't really matter. We'll see if we can find it in a second, but we're gonna come in and we're gonna wrap over that, kind of build up some bulk behind that. And you can kind of see that marabou is nice, right? That 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 partridge hackle over the top kind of completes the fly. We'll throw in some super glue here, right on the thread. Make some wraps around there just to secure that. Grab our whip finish tool. Throw in a few whip finishes here so we know that this fly will be durable. Trim off our thread. Give it a spin, make sure it's looking okay. It's looking pretty good, but you can see we've now got some sparkle built in there with that collar. That slush jelly looks really nice in the water. It's got lots of movement, but it's completely opaque, which is what I really like about this fly. And it's crazy durable with that slush jelly material. Super, super easy fly to tie, works really well. Give it a go in your local still waters. I'm sure you'll catch a lot of fish with this. Till next time, catch fish.